the emotional and spiritual consultant, the spiritual healer, whatever you want to call me. There's many things. So if you're new and you're just coming in, you know me through Facebook and you know me through my other channel as Corey, the spiritual healer. And I am all of that as well. So I haven't changed anything about me except accepted me. And there's such a change that's been happening within myself and my life. And I really, truly don't even know. I don't have words. So the podcast became She Is because I, that's all I have right now. I'm like, that's all I have. I've kind of done the healing work. I'm the healed healer. I've done the healing work that I needed to do. I have set myself free of so many things. I've accepted myself. You know, I've accepted these things about myself. But I'm, there are words that are just like, oh, yeah, I just did that. But it wasn't really that easy. It wasn't that simple. And a lot of things took place, including the creation of my work, my book, my more than existing book that's right here, my deck of oracle cards that sits right here. And the fact that I have truly, and I'm looking into two cameras, I'm sorry, but this is recording in two different spots. So I'm trying to find where to look. This is new to have two cameras going. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking all over the place. But what I can... But the She Is podcast um, is mostly going to be an audio. It will be something that you can put in your earbuds, you can listen to. You've just seen that there is actually four videos that are actually that are posted right now. And there is also the, um, the introduction. And so the introduction tells you a little bit more about who she is and who I am and where I've been and, and what's been taking place. And today, um, I had a plan when I came in today. I had a really, really freaking good plan. And I really wanted to talk about um, betrayal and those type of things. And I just looked over and realized that I actually got a dog collar on my bed. So this is my life. Um, there's dog stuff everywhere. There is things everywhere. And we just have a little bit of everything everywhere here. And that's kind of been where my life has been. Um, unknowing, when, you, when you're so unknowing of who you are and what you are, and you're trying to... You can be, you're fighting so hard to be accepted as you, and you find yourself trying to changing and fitting into the world and just molding, like you just get cast and molded into formed and shaped into what the world wants you to be. I wrote a whole book about that called Wine and Chips, which is not published yet because I have a lot of work that can't be published until I have money, <laughs> until there's money there to do it all. And you have to, you have to pick and choose what is priority to you. And that's kind of where I am in life is that I've organized and cleared the clutter enough to be able to choose what is priority. Um, this podcast was going to be all about betrayal and it's not all about betrayal. It's kind of all about me again. Um, and this is and the reason why this podcast is the way it is, is because the psychic medium work is me channeling. It's me doing the channeling work and, you know, bringing through the messages that can help others along with helping myself. And this is, this is all about the journey in through emotionally and spiritually growing up to become the woman. We may look like the adult. We may look like the woman, the man. We may, we may look like all those parts. We're wearing the suit. We're wearing the mask. We're wearing all those parts that, you know, we should be that person. But we have so many things of our past and different, different ages of life we were at and different situations and circumstances that we were in where we actually lost ourselves. We stopped and we stopped living and we stopped emotionally and spiritually growing. We numb. And I had this discussion last night in my level four in the certification training program of more than existing, where I spoke to the students through channel. I channel through that work. Um, through channel, I spoke about us, you, about us talking about soul work and our soul self. And, and, I'm, and I try and explain that you can't really give away your soul. Your soul, you know, is something, this big, vast space that is invisible, but it, it takes up so much, but it's so small, but it's so big inside of us. And, you know, it's, you can't give away what is not yours. You, you can't own, you can't own what is not yours. You cannot claim those things. A human, a human shell, that meat suit that we wear is fully responsible for everything that is, that is happening within us of who we are today. And so my daughter actually just said to me, I think you just answered your own card as I was reading the uh, the, for the number one card of my new deck of oracle cards, the everyday goddess, and it was grace and it was innocence. And it's about returning to grace. See yourself through the eyes of the child. But in reverse, when you feel like you're going in verse is that 
you know, maybe you're acting like the child. Maybe you're not acting like the adult you're supposed to be acting like. And, and I find myself a little bit in that energy today, and I can't explain why, and I didn't know why. And it started to come to me. As I took, made myself a coffee, I sat down, I started to breathe things through, and I was going to come in and do the podcast, and I had it all planned out, and it was in my head. And then I stopped, and I took the time, and she made a statement to me that really really affected me in a way and I'm like I feel as if and I was this is what I tell myself and how I work with myself bringing it home to soul learning to use the soul language learning to talk to yourself with such love and compassion I went to my heart and I asked my heart I asked my my human my human self why do you feel why do you think you are feeling this way and I let my head talk and a lot of garbage came up, a lot of garbage. And there was a lot of garbage about, you know, I, here I am, I'm 49, almost 50. I got, I'm one week away as of yesterday. I think it hit me when I was teaching last night, when I realized I'm one week away. I'm one week away from 50. Um, my daughter appears informed to be way more accomplished than I am. She's got a couple homes bought she's done all these things in her life she's went to school she's got a well situated career where she's like in high demand and here I am living the artsy fartsy life and you know living living on my dream living through my dream and creating and producing and writing and all of this stuff which is not always seeing the return <laughs> where you know which you which the human world would compared to success, but I feel like I have been very successful. So when I took the story and I brought it back to my heart, and I, and so I asked myself a different question. Where in your life do you feel as if you are not succeeding? That you are turning 50, and where do you feel like you are not succeeding? And that's when the truth started to come. I felt angry. And I realized that this is a part of a grief process. I spent all of my 40s and probably lifetimes before that getting sad, feeling as if I was really sad. And I couldn't explain the sad. It was just like a, this deep-seated sad. And now I'm not sad at all. Um, I look at the things that I'm doing and I chuckle at myself and I say, thank God that I can still do these things. And I did have a long, successful career. I had a beautiful, spent 30 years in an industry where I still had a running clientele where I was booked day, morning till evening consistently. I just wasn't, I didn't know my worth and my value enough, or I was trying to make some other person or other people happy. So I was always trying to keep up to a life, a standard. I was, I was always chasing happiness. I wasn't chasing success. I was chasing happiness. I was chasing something that really, truly, I knew that I felt somewhere in my life before. My soul knew it, and my soul was trying to show me, but I didn't slow down long enough to connect to me to know that it was something that I was feeling inside of me, but it had to be inside of me, because if I was sad, how could I have that? So what I recognized today, <laughs> what I recognized today, the grief thing, and I feel very exposed because you're also seeing a lot more of me on camera. You're seeing a lot more of the room. You're seeing a lot more of the space, and that's intentional. That's me not hiding behind the desk and only seeing from top up, like from the chest up type of thing. It's exposing even more of myself because now I'm not just channeling. Yes, I share my stories of my life, but I don't sit as Corey. I sit channeled in. And this is me sitting as Corey, as, as when my friends sit with me, when the people who love me dearly sit with me. This is who they get. And so I am this person that they're like, oh, you know, maybe she's not all that big golden bright light that we all thought that, that people expect her to be. She's such a, she's real. And so there's a realness. So when I first started the, pod, pod, the podcast, I called it Keeping It Real. But I recognize something when I watch back to a lot of those. Now, there's a few that I look back and I'm like, I love that version of me. I love that. I love me as me. And, um, and I recognize that what is happening with me today is another stage of grief, is I am looking at my life 
from where I am today in this body, who I am, where I have been, and the fact that I have spent 49 years, a lot of those 49 years, I was numb. I missed the opportunity, oops, I missed the opportunity to enjoy, to embrace all of the happiness and joy that I knew was there because I didn't chase dreams, I chased people. I chased men, I chased relationships. I chased trying to find happiness and joy in somebody else, in trying to make somebody else happy, in being with somebody else, and having somebody else be there with me. And so there was so much of that time in my life that I look back at, and I found myself not being angry at anyone else because I'm not. It's my ownership and responsibility. Of if I had have listened, <laughs> my mission upon this earth was to come here to obviously experience, but to find this happiness and joy. I avoid it, neglect it, and reject it. So much of what I had, and based on some conditioning, of course, and some old belief system, but a piece of me that was shut down. So back into the soul story of, all, of where this goes, when I took it home to the soul, and when I started to connect to the soul, and I do soul retrieval, soul revival, those type of things. And I mean, it's all symbolic to the pieces of us that we let go of. And it's the essence. And I, and I recognize that I have such an amazing essence that I love to share with other people, but I don't share with myself. And I don't acknowledge that into myself. And, and that's not a sad story. That's, some, that's something of a truth. And so betrayal did come back. And I got back on track to the story of betrayal and, and where we betray ourselves and why am I letting the person who betrayed me the most decide for me that conversation. And that's in the last podcast that I did. And the book is called More Than Existing. And I said I was pushed to write the, six, the 16th chapter of, of, of my book when I was talking um, with, my, with the group this morning. And I'm like, I was pushed to write that chapter, like to push myself a little bit further. And I know that's what's happening right now is that I'm in that stage of grief to push myself to feel what it feels like to feel healthy anger. I'm like, do you understand, you know, under, do you understand, do you understand healthy anger and what healthy anger means? Because we didn't, because we suppressed everything for all of the years is that when we had an explosion of emotions, it was like an unhealthy anger that really took away even from our own essence. It took away from us. When you do, when you're so when so much bubbles over, we become like that volcano, and we become the master manipulator of our own lives. And then we convince ourselves of these new realities that we create, these versions of these stories that I know I'm worth it, and I deserve this, and I'm I'm gonna have this, and everybody should be treating me this way. And, and we do that, right? We get caught in that spiral. Well, this is a different kind of anger. This is a healthy anger. This is something that I don't know if I've ever. If I ever allowed myself to sit in until I hit this stage of life, I am turning 50. I am where I am because of the choices that I made. I'm also where I am successfully because of the choices that I made. But I, 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 was, I was put here in this position to be a certain kind of a person, but it wasn't a certain kind of a person for the world. It was a certain kind of human being that I would have to become to be the best version of myself, not for the world, to be the change in the world that I wanted to create, to be the change in the world that I wanted to live in, to be a part of my world, to be a part of that experience. And so the everyday goddess, Oracle Cards, is a real paradox. She's got angel wings, and it's about angels, and it's about goddesses, and it's about everyday goddesses. There's no goddesses that didn't exist. There's no, I don't know if you can't see her in the picture, but there's no god, there's Kwan Yen is on the floor here. Um, you have Mother Mary right here. So we have these, I have these goddesses and of amazing energy. And then we have a Buddha energy over here. And so I'm a very collective, I'm very collective -y of, or I have a very collective kind of sense of self and who I am. But that, that anger that I have today and what I feel today is the fact that I did betray myself. When I betrayed myself for a long time, that when I look at the 50 years that I've been here, I look at the fact that what if I had of, what if I had have been healthy?
would it have been if I had been emotionally healthy? If I had had a healthy sense of self, if I had been more of an existing prior to now, would I only just be now starting my life? But what I truly was angry about was the fact that I had numbed myself for so many years that I missed out on this beautiful life. And there's so much beauty in this world and so much beauty in this life that I actually, that I actually miss. I, I danced. I, I've lived a lot of experiences, but there's a lot of beauty I didn't see. And that included my own beauty. And that included the beauty of being a mother. That included the beauty of a lot of things. So there was a lot of beauty I did not see. And now that I'm blossoming into this and growing into this, I'm having to accept so many parts of, of, of life. And that's, that's a truth. And so if you are where I am, if you're going through these changes, and trust me, go through them in, cha- in, in increments. And I would say there's pivotal times in our lives. You have pivotal ages. So you have 20, you have 17, 18, like th- that age. And then you have 21. Then there's 27. And then there's 33. And then there's 37. And then there's 40. And then there's 44. And I used to always say, you know, I always thought I was dying at 44. I had that magic number. Like, I always used to see 44, and I say, that was my magic number. Um, no, that was my angel numbers, and that, that would be my alignment. Like, I would fully align. And now it's that infinity of eight, but 13 is one of my one of my big numbers, which also is a four, right? And so I have this sense of, of self that, you know, 44 came. And then 47 hit, and 47 was another big number. 47 was that I made some big major life changes. I I, I changed my life drastically, um, but my health also took a change. And now I feel myself like really, truly healing and finding my way back. But I had to take this the journey into the dark night of soul and find out that light and that energy inside of me is so much brighter than any darkness. So... Before I would have associated a bad day, a bad moment that I was having, or a moment like this as dark, like, oh, I'm, I'm being morbid, I'm being dark. No, I'm being real. And so the anger is a real truth that I am now truly, honestly able to connect to that it's okay to be anger. Because once you find that anger, that fight, that you're like, no, F that from my soul out from looking beyond, no, it was not okay. It was not okay what people did to me. And I've kept justifying that over the years. It's like I write about in my book about forgiveness and about forgiving. But it, I didn't once say it was okay. It is not okay. And I even write in one of the chapters, you know, sometimes you just got to say fuck off. And you just do. There's just times you got to say fuck it. And there's other times you just have to say fuck off. I'm done. Like screw that. And there's times that you have to create those boundaries. And that's real me. And I don't do that very often because, you know, I'm nice and so um i i would say it's okay you know i make this i would make excuses for people's behavior and why they're like they are okay so if i could if i can't make excuses for me anymore and i take full ownership and responsibility for my life which i do then i can't make excuses for somebody else's behavior i can't allow that to also be in my life so finding myself now saying no you know what that behavior was not okay that's not acceptable, and I'm not defending that again, and I'm not, and I'm not letting that that behavior of somebody else to be something that impacts or affects even my life or to interfere with my life. And I'm like, no. so it was not okay. So I find myself in my level two a little bit here of more than more than existing, and also my second book, Beyond the Reflection. So beyond the reflection, you learn soul language. Soul language is love language. It is unconditional love. I know where I've been. I know what I've done. I've taken ownership and responsibility for that. But I'm not carrying anyone out. I'm not carrying the load of somebody else's bad behavior. I'm not I'm not going to keep saying that what happened to me in the past is, you know, was okay. I do have these triggers that's still there. I do still have PTSD that is still there. I have those things that affected my mind, my brain that made me feel like I was losing my effing mind because of somebody else's behavior and it wasn't okay. And here I am now at 50, almost 50 years old, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm healing those parts of myself because when somebody, when those energies come at you and you get treated that way for a long time, it really does, it shrinks pieces of your mind and it shrinks you. It's like you become so shrunken in and then that passionate desire to fight for you is you don't recognize you, or you're uncertain or unsure of 
of your own intuition, your own um, for yourself, for everyone else is good, but trusting your instincts and having that healthy sense of instinctual because fight, flight, or freeze is so active, right? Um, so to be reactive would have been to let all that suppressed energy out and turn to something, whether it's to turn to food, a glass of wine, anything. Whereas now, since November, in taking ownership and responsibility, I have given up even the wine because I gave up sugar and carbohydrates, and I had to deal with everything. I had to deal with every single emotion. So I'm really, truly, honestly dealing with this. And so now understanding that you have a right to have to be angry, but not to be explosive angry because it's not serving your highest good. When you can get to a healthy sense of using your innate, your natural abilities, your instinctual, your primal, fight, not fight, flight, or fear type of, not acronym of fear, false evidence of fear and real. The truth is, the truth is, I have been there, I have done that, I went through that, and I'm not allowing that again. And that's the, it's like, so that anger then becomes a desire. So it's a tipping point. It is a, it's like this equator line, I call it. It's like the crossroads. So at that balancing, that tipping point of saying, okay, I'm going to use this anger as jet fuel for this, for this growth of me. And I'm going to use it to the highest good of me. I don't need, I don't need to be, I don't need to be celebrated. I need to be, I don't need to be celebrated for this last 50 years. I need to be able to. I need to be able to take that ball of that and just start tossing it into the future to start letting it go into the future and saying, pick up, pick up the me that I know I'm going to be, bring her back in that glass, in that ball and show her to me. Let me see her because I need to see exactly what it is that she actually is looking like because the me of today don't really even know, but all I know is that my heart has a, 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 a love anger, a love anger that I know whatever is over there for me, whatever is coming over there for myself, my family, for us together, for my business, for my work is absolutely beautiful. Give me a reflection of what is possible from all of this essence of everything that I dreamt, everything that I was, and show me, show me Show me this image and who I'm talking to is you're still talking to your soul because this is already in creation, but we have so many pathways and so many journeys to take and we have free will. So you have a choice to self-sabotage, to speak to the person who betrayed you the most, the other parts of you, or you have the opportunity to speak to your future self and ask your future self to align to you. And, the, and with no, you don't need to see the picture of what it's all going to look like. Once you start to see that you, what that means is you feel it and you place it into your heart. I can feel myself happy. I can feel myself living that wealthy and healthy is what I call it, that wealthy and healthy 50. And it's not a celebration. It's a knowing that I've already had it. It's already been with me. I just forgot to let it be here. Like I was unaware. I was unawake to the fact that I'm not going searching. It was here. I just need to feel it so that I can hold that feeling so I can start walking towards that future so that there is no sense of betrayal, not betraying ourselves anymore, so that I can be fully spiritually, emotionally awake and aware. And so emotional maturity, I think I've really gotten that. Um, and so when I was writing earlier, I wrote spiritual and emotional maturity is the day you realize that you have been playing house inside of an, an image of an adult. This was one of my, this was actually supposed to be at my event that I spoke at last week and for women in blue in Edmonton. And once I started to speak, everything else came because I read, I read off the energy of the room. So this was the statement. I want to read this before I go. And you won't see so many of blogs of me this way. I don't think, I don't know yet, but cause I don't know exactly what this podcast looks like. It'll be more audio and it'll be much shorter. Most will be about 20 minutes. Who were you before you said yes to another, to another, and no to you a thousand times over. Who were you before you ignored all of those warning signs and the triggers going beep, beep, like the, like a gauge that had been that had been warning you you have been here before. 
Do you have enough gas to make it to the end? If not, why are you why are you pushing and why are you not stopping? Spiritual and emotional maturity is the day you realize that you have been playing house inside of an image of an adult, conditioned to be, educated to be, life experience to be, pulled, pushed into being with a missing key or two to doors that allow us to open our minds and to open our hearts, to stop screaming, ranting, and raving. Listen to me. All I wanted was someone to listen to me. And it was me that I was waiting. I just wanted to be seen, to be heard, be little, be littling, longing, judging, degrading, disrespecting, not just others, but ourselves with unconscious words and thoughts, teaching and believing fear, creating a mob and not a network or support have taken us to where we are today. This is where we have lost so much of ourselves, is that in all of those other parts, educated, conditioned to be, life experience to be, that it's okay that we do that. It's okay that we be that. It's okay that other people do that to us. It's not okay for any of us to do it to each other, never mind to do it to ourselves. It is not okay. Dignity. And re returning to that dignity returns us to that benevolence. And so we stop teaching that we may have to stand tall and look past the small. So we have enough gas to stand tall, to stand tall enough with confidence and awareness of a truth that the issues, choices, and decisions that prove that truly matter are ones that sometimes may appear to be small, but cause some of the biggest problems. Works of love have a powerful energy that when through, when, when we've come through the energy of awakening to our truth, that we recognize grace, dignity, and pride. And with that, the world stops. And we stop spinning, and we stop allowing, and we start to recognize that if we can be the eye in the storm, that emotionally, spiritually, we can become aware that we may have lived in the chaos and the conflict and the drama. And we may have sold ourselves and, and lost ourselves. And we may have been, you know, it may have, life may have cost us more than we could afford to lose too many times. But in chaos, there is always, there is always, there's always that friendly voice, that friendly person. There's always a kindness. In drama, there is always the one person that says stop. In hate, there's always one person that walks forward and says that's not okay. Were you ever that one person? Because what you didn't like, what would infuriate you was the fact that it was happening. But you knew that if you engaged the same way, you would be a part of the problem. So somewhere along the line, in some of your stories, you did stand tall. You did have courage. You did have strength. And that's the things that I start to really talk to myself, where you did not betray yourself. And that was what we call loving change. We use the power of love to be the change that we wanted to see in the world. At this point, and where I am today, and where I hope this helps you take yourself to, is that when you can stop playing house inside of the in that image of an adult, when you stop and really truly pause, that you can recognize that you can tear down the dollhouse, you can go back to the foundation, and you can take all of that, all that anger that you that you stayed crammed inside of that space for way too long, thinking that that was the way that you had to live, and you can say, I stop. I am now choosing, I am now making the choice to choose to do the work, to do the foundation work, 
to build the empire and to freaking grow up. And to grow up means to actually go to the higher self. And with that means you're going to get taller. You're going to remember the strength. You're going to remember the courage. You're going to remember those things that you had. So there's so much of that betrayal conversation, which I will put into another podcast. But today I just wanted to do an introduction of me and where 50 is and what and what loving anger looks like, what stages of grief in different ways look like. And this is not the grief of the loss of, you know, losing somebody that that is no longer here in human form. It's the loss of the parts of you that, that you've held on to, which I've held on to for so long, defending her, protecting her, holding her tight, but also saying, you know, it was okay. They didn't mean it. I was also, I was also being a little bit um, not kind to that version of myself when I would justify the behavior of somebody else's actions as being okay. And by doing that, I was devaluing my own worth. I was taken away from me. So when it, when somebody else will say to you, yeah, but, so I know in my family, myself, my mother had this discussion many times. When she would say to me, yeah, but, and I say, well, this happened to me. Yeah, but, yeah, but. And I said, yeah, but you're discounting my story. And my truth is my truth. And I'm worthy to that truth. I'm, it's, I'm not saying it's real. I'm not saying it's the way it is. I'm saying it's the way I felt and the way that I experienced it at the time. And so that you're allowed to experience. And so today, as I have that experience and I went to that experience, I didn't go, yeah, but Corey, this, you're a grown up now, you're a grown ass woman. And I went, yes, Corey, yes, Corey. Instead of saying no to, no to myself, I said, yes, yes. There's something here that you need to explore further. There's something here you need to look at. And that's exactly what I did. I went inward. I went to the soul self and I recognized the fact that I went from sadness. Well, after sadness, I have to have this sense of that anger self so that I could not use any more buts, any more justifications, any more anything. I see her. I see what that version of me really truly needs to be to be the woman who is the support, the backing, the the love, the confidence, the everything that is needed to be support for this work that I do for the family that I have, for my granddaughter. And I'm going to use that anger sense to rise up, to go to that point, to be able to be that person that truly will walk in the energy. I may have been numb for the first 50 years of my life. Not 50 years. One more week, 49, 49 point whatever years. And now on that next one, I'm going to be very awake, very aware. And it's lookout world and there will be no fillers. There's no room for excuses. There's no room for expectations. There's room for doing, for living and for being. And this anger that I have today, this is what I want to know. If you have that same anger, if you have that same desire, well, I have a great program for you <laughs> that you can go into as well. But if you have that today, it doesn't mean that you are an angry person. It means that you are awake and aware that you are now feeling what you need to feel. And you have a right to question that and you have the right to now say no to all of those things and say, I am now choosing me. So from that place, I will no longer betray me. So the part that did die and what I'm grieving today is the fact that I let that happen to those parts of me instead of letting her live that joy and happiness that was really truly still in there in that soul self and take, I've taken back the sadness. I've taken me back. And that's my journey with she is, is that. I may not know what I what I exactly I am. I may not know who I am. I may not know all of that stuff from today. But what I do know is that I am fighting. And that's what I'm here to do with you is that I'm hoping and really wanting you to see that through me being the truth of me and being honest and real that this somehow shifts. Thank you for being with me. And sorry I couldn't get the lives. I've been working today for the She Is Brought podcast. Um, I will try tomorrow. I do a quick one live and um but thank you thank you for joining please subscribe if you if you're new and you're just watching this for the first time please subscribe please hit the notification bell so that you get all the updates of when i post a new podcast there is four already posted one more and i have another youtube channel Corey thorne the spiritual healer and that one has all my woo woo work all my all my horoscopes all of that stuff in there all my channel messages and a lot of, and my other podcasts are still in there right now, which I'll also be moving. So um, welcome and thank you for joining me in She Is 
and I'm here to help others be able to emotionally and spiritually mature so I can so that we can be the change that we want to see in the world. Much love and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.